Welcome to Up Degree. I am Konika Ghosh, and in this video, I will be discussing with you all the concept of clinical data management, or like I will be introducing to you all the topic of what is clinical data management. So, clinical data management plays an essential role in the data collection phase of clinical research. The process of collecting and managing research data is done in accordance with regulatory standards to obtain quality information that is complete and error free. The goal is to gather as much as data for analysis as possible. The field of clinical data management has come about due to demands from both the pharmaceutical industry and the regulatory authorities. To maintain the integrity of the data, the CDM or the clinical data management process starts at the very beginning of a clinical trial, even before the study protocol is finalized. The CDM team or the clinical data management team designs a case report from CRF and defines the data fields to be utilized. CRFs specify the type of data to be collected, the units of measurement to be used, and CRF completion guidelines. Variables are annotated using coded terms. A data management plan is then developed as a guide, including a description of the trial CDM activities. Databases are built to support CDM tasks with corresponding compliance tools. Testing is done before using the plan with actual clinical trial data. CFR tracking, data entry, validation, discrepancy management, medical coding, and database locking. These are the different clinical data management activities. So therefore, what is clinical data management? Clinical data management is the process of handling data from clinical trials. The inherent goal of any clinical data management system is to produce and maintain quality data. Clinical data management is a critical process in clinical research which leads to generation of high quality, reliable and statistically sound data from clinical trials. Clinical data management ensures collection, integration and availability of data at appropriate quality and cost. Now there are certain steps in the process of clinical data management. What are they? First is the source data are generated. Common examples of source data are clinical site medical records, laboratory results and patient diaries. Like the results, the tests that are done in the labs, the results of those tests, the different medical records of different patients and the patient diaries. These are the source data. If paper case report forms that is CRFs are being used, the clinical site records are transcribed onto the CRFs. Data from the CRFs as well as other source data are entered into the clinical trial database. Next, electronic CRFs allow data to be entered directly into the database from source documents. Data from paper CRFs are often entered twice and reconciled in order to reduce the error rate. The data are checked to accuracy, quality and completeness and problems are resolved. This often involves queries to the clinical site. The database is locked when the data are considered final. The data are reformatted for reporting and analysis. Tables, listings and figures are also generated. The data are analyzed and the analysis results are reported. When significant results are found, this step may result in the generation of additional tables, listings or figures. The results are integrated into high level documentation, documentation such as investigators, brochures and clinical study reports. The database and other study data are archived. So this is the concept of your clinical data management. In my next video, I will be discussing about the different types of clinical data and what is clinical data. So for now, let me end this video over here. Thank you. Goodbye. See you all for the next video. Welcome to UpDegree Clinical Data Management program using SAS. In this video, we'll be talking about what is clinical data and what are the different types of clinical data. Clinical data includes data based on administration, that is administrative data. It is related to demographic information. It includes diagnosis treatment, prescription drugs, laboratory tests, physiologic monitoring data, hospitalization, patient insurance, etc. Individual organizations such as hospitals or health systems may provide access to internal staff. So clinical data is a staple resource for most health and medical research. Clinical data is either collected during the course of ongoing patient care or as part of a formal clinical trial program. Clinical data falls into six major types. Electronic health records, administrative data, claims data, patient or disease registries, health service, clinical trials data. Now let's talk about 
the different types of clinical data. So first, what is electronic health record? The purest type of electronic clinical data which is obtained at the point of care at a medical facility, hospital, clinic or practice. Often referred to as the electronic medical record, the EMR is generally not available to outside researchers. The data collected includes administrative and demographic information, diagnosis treatment, prescription drugs, laboratory tests, physiologic monitoring data, hospitalization, patient insurance, etc. Next is administrative data. These types of data are associated with electronic health records which are primarily hospital discharge data reported to a government agency like AHRQ. Next is claims data. Claims data describe the billable interactions between insured patients and the healthcare delivery system. Claims data falls into four general categories, inpatient, outpatient, pharmacy and enrollment. The sources of claims data can be obtained from the government, example Medicare, and or commercial health firms, example United Healthcare. Next type of clinical data is patient or disease registries. Disease registries are clinical information systems that track a narrow range of key data for certain chronic conditions such as Alzheimer's disease, cancer, diabetes, heart disease and asthma. Registries often provide critical information for managing patient conditions. Next is health service. In order to provide an accurate evaluation of the population health national service of the most common chronic conditions are generally conducted to provide prevalence estimates. National surveys are one of the few types of data collected specifically for research purposes thus making it more widely accessible. And the next and the last type of clinical data is clinical trials, registries and databases. So this is a clinical data which is data related to all prescription drugs, laboratory tests that is whatever tests done in labs the patient history, the patient diseases, the patient records, the treatment that is done to every patient, the diagnosis that is done for every patient, all these are, comes under clinical data. So in this video, we will be learning till here. In my next video, I will be starting with clinical data management activities or the different clinical data management activities. For now, let me end this video over here. Thank you. Goodbye. See you all for the next video. Welcome to Updegree Clinical Data Management Program using SAS. In this video, we will be discussing about clinical data management activities, that is different clinical data management activities. So what are the different clinical data management activities? First comes data collection, next CRF tracking, next data entry, next data validation, then discrepancy management, medical coding and database co-locking. So let me explain you all individually each of the data management activities, that is each of the clinical data management activities. First is data collection. Data collection is done using the CRF that may exist in the form of a paper or an electronic version. The traditional method is to employ paper CRFs to collect the data responses, which are translated to the database by means of data entry done in house. These paper CRFs are filled up by the investigator according to the completion guidelines. In the ECRF based CDM, the investigator or a design, designee will be logging into the CDM system and entering the data directly at the site. In ECRF method, chances of errors are less and the resolution of discrepancies happens faster. Since pharmaceutical companies try to reduce the time taken for drug development processes by enhancing the speed of processes involved, many pharmaceutical companies are opting for a ECRF options. Next is CRF tracking. The entries made in the CRF will be monitored by the clinical research associate that is CRA for completeness and filled up CRFs are retrieved and handled over to the CDM team. The CDM team will track the retrieved CRFs and maintain their record. CRFs are tracked for missing pages and illegal data that is illegible data manually to assure that the data are not lost. In case of missing or illegible data, a clarification is obtained from the investigator and the issue is resolved. Next is data entry. Data entry takes place according to the guidelines prepared along with the DMP. This is applicable only in the case of paper CRF retrieved from the sites. Usually double data entry is performed wherein the data is entered by two operators separately. The second pass entry helps in verification and reconciliation by identifying the transcription errors and discrepancies caused by illegible data. Moreover, double data entry helps in getting a cleaner database compared to a single data entry. Earlier studies have shown that double data entry ensures better consistency with paper CRF as denoted by a lesser error rate. 
Next comes the concept of data validation. Data validation is the process of testing the validity of data in accordance with the protocol specifications. Edit check programs are written to identify the discrepancies in the entered data, which are embedded in the database to ensure data validity. These programs are written according to the logic condition mentioned in the DVP. These edit check programs are initially tested with dummy data containing discrepancies. Discrepancy is defined as a data point that fails to pass a validation check. Discrepancy may be due to inconsistent data, missing data, range checks, and deviations from the protocol. In ECRF-based studies, data validation process will be run frequently for identifying discrepancies. These discrepancies will be resolved by investigators after logging into the system. Ongoing quality control of data processing is undertaken at regular intervals during the course of CDM. For example, if the inclusion criteria specify that the age of the patient should be between 18 to 65 years, both inclusive, an edit program will be written for two conditions, that is age less than 18 and greater than 65. If for any patient the condition becomes true or discrepancy will be generated, these discrepancies will be highlighted in the system and data clarification forms can be generated. DCFs are documents containing queries pertaining to the discrepancies identified. Next comes the concept of discrepancy management. Discrepancy management, this is also called query solution resolution. Discrepancy management includes reviewing discrepancies, investigating the reason and resolving them with documentary proof or declaring them as irresolvable. Discrepancy management helps in cleaning the data and gathers enough evidence for the deviations observed in data. Almost all CDMS have a discrepancy database where all discrepancies will be recorded and stored with audit trial. Based on the types identified, discrepancies are either flagged to the investigator for clarification or closed in-house by self-evident corrections without sending DCF to the site. The most common SECs are obvious spelling errors. For discrepancies that require clarifications from the investigator, DCFs will be sent to the site. The CDM tools help in the creation and printing of DCFs. Investigators will write the resolution or explain the circumstances that led to the discrepancy in data. When a resolution is provided by the investigator, the same will be updated in the database. In case of ECRFs, the investigator can access the discrepancies flagged to him and will be able to provide the resolutions online. The CDM team reviews all discrepancies at regular intervals to ensure that they have been resolved. The resolved data discrepancies are recorded as closed. This means that those validation failures are no longer considered to be active and future data validation attempts on the same data will not create a discrepancy for same data point. But closure of discrepancies is not always possible. In some cases, the investigator will not be able to provide a resolution for the discrepancy. Such discrepancies will be considered as irresolvable and will be updated in the discrepancy database. Discrepancy management is the most critical activity in the CDM process. Being the vital activity in cleaning up the data, utmost attention must be observed while handling the discrepancies. Next comes the concept of medical coding. Medical coding helps in identifying and properly classifying the medical terminologies associated with the clinical trial. For classification of events, medical dictionaries available online are used. Technically, this activity needs the knowledge of medical terminology, understanding of disease, entities, drugs used, and the basic knowledge of the pathological processes involved. Functionally, it also requires knowledge about the structure of electronic medical dictionaries and the hierarchy of classifications available in them. Adverse events occurring during the study prior to an and concomitantly administered medications and pre or coexisting illnesses are coded using the available medical dictionaries. Commonly, medical dictionary for regulatory activities is used for the coding of adverse events as well as other illnesses and World Health Organization drug dictionary en enhanced is used for coding the medications. These dic dictionaries contain the respective classifications of adverse events and drugs in proper classes. Other dictionaries are also available for use in data management. Some pharmaceutical companies utilize customized dictionaries to suit their needs and meet their standard operating procedures. Medical coding helps in classifying reported medical terms on the CRF to standard dictionary terms in order to achieve data consistency and avoid unnecessary duplication. 
For example, the investigators may use different terms for the same adverse, adverse event, but it is important to code all of them to a single standard code and maintain uniformity in the process. The right coding and classification of adverse events and medication is crucial as an incorrect coding may lead to masking of safety issues or highlight the wrong safety concerns related to the drug. Next. And the last data management activity is database locking. After a proper quality check and assurance, the final data validation is run. If there are no discrepancies, the SAS datasets are finalized in consultation with the statistician. All data management activities should have been completed prior to database lock. To ensure this, a pre-lock checklist is used and completion of all activities is confirmed. This is done as the database cannot be changed in any manner after locking. Once the approval for locking is obtained from all stakeholders, the database is locked and clean data is extracted for statistical analysis. Generally, no modification in the database is possible, but in case of a critical issue or for other important operational reasons, Privileged users can modify the data even after the database is locked. This, however, requires proper documentation and an audit trial has to be maintained with sufficient justification for updating the locked database. Data extraction is done from the final database after locking. So this is the concept of database locking. There are certain roles which are considered as minimum requirements for a CDM team. That is, it's a data manager, database programmer or designer, medical coder, clinical data coordinator, quality control associate and data entry associate. So in this video, we'll be learning till here. In my next video, we'll be starting the practical session of clinical data management. That, we, that is, we will be starting with clinical data management using SAS. We'll be starting with SAS Essentials first. So for now, let me end this video over here. Thank you. Goodbye. See you all for the next video.